couple of quick questions that have dropped in from the audience. Brian, this one dropped in during your segment here, and it was just asking when you had slide number 18 on the screen, you were talking about you know a list of documents you might want to consider preparing. What are the most common you know documents that are often missing from your you know your toolkit, for lack of a better word? And, and are you found, do you find that most there, there are a couple of documents that are overlooked? And if so, what are those? Or if there are any documents that perhaps haven't been mentioned that you think it might be worthwhile preparing prior to uh, prior to moving forward? Uh, yeah, I think, uh, and, and Randall hit on this as well. I mean, he. he, he our approaches are very, very similar. Uh, I think the RFC forms are, are the document that's missing. And and Randall can to jump in here too, but if I see a client file on their own, I would say maybe once or twice uh, in my history that I've seen somebody go out and get an RFC form um, mm-hmm. or treating medical source statement pri- during their application process. Um, the rest of the forms um, uh, are more either for internal offices or are absolutely required. Uh, for instance, if you don't have uh, an appointment rep or et cetera, then you know the, the claim won't won't process through. So I, I think the RFC forms um, are are the one thing that it's missing, and it would be more beneficial to have that um, in as many cases you, as you can. I agree, and even specific RFCs sometimes, as the uh, as the months progress, or even as you get closer to the hearing, uh, you may have just a general RFC at first. But um, as the the you know the months progress or closer to the hearing, you might want to provide the client with a specific RFC for his, for instance, orthopedic doctor to complete or a cardiologist depending on the impairment. So it it varies, but you know once you have this conversation with the client um, and you get to know the client a little bit more. Uh, you'll know which RFC to send uh, to the client or and or to the doctor. Thank you so much. And we'll close with this question here. Just asking, can you submit a doctor's statement or an affidavit at appeals counsel stage? And if so, does it need to be submitted with appeal within 65 days or do you have additional time to submit that? Yes, you, you absolutely can, um, if, especially if it's relevant. But what typically happens is once the appeal is filed with the appeals council, they send you correspondence indicating that you have 25 additional days to submit any relevant documents that you think would be important. Um, so the answer is yes, you can. And then you'll have additional time typically to submit records. But the the records should be submitted within 65 days, actually. They give you a six, five-day window uh, within the, the date of the unfavorable decision. And then you may get additional letters or a letter indicating you have 25 days to submit any uh, relevant documentation after that. And I would say it, it to add to that, if in doubt, submit it, even if you're out of time. Yeah. Um, the appeals council may, uh, I, I think when you get a decision from the appeals council, it's generally two pages. If they, if they, you know, if you win, you know, they send it back to the judge and they give you some, some small rationale. If you lose, it's a, it's a one page form. So, um, you know, definitely I would submit anything that you had to the appeals council. I just don't have a lot of faith that it might get looked at. So.